Ellie here from The Dark Imp, helping parents reclaim family time by playing board games together. So today we're going to look at three different games that involve stocks and shares. These economic games require players to work out when they're going to buy and sell things so they can capitalise and do best in the game. Okay, so let's start with 1920 Wall Street. Not a particularly exciting box, not a particularly exciting title, but actually a really nice economic game that's in quite a small box. It's, uh, the box is deceptive because the game is quite thinky. So, in 1920 Wall Street, you are, this company creates lots of different games that are based around uh, events in the 20th century. So, of course, this is about the, the kind of the collapse of Wall Street in 1920. So, uh, at some point, there's going to be this bombing, Wall Street bombing, and see what happens to the, to the stock exchange at that point. This is the build-up to that moment when the Wall Street bombing happened. Uh, so in this game we've got four different commodities. We've got corn, uh, I think that's cotton, uh, iron or steel and oil. And the prices of these are tracked on this little board. And so they're going to rise and they're going to fall during the game. This is the slightly less fluctuating side and this one is, is it just changes how far down they go, how far up they go and, and changes uh, the fluctuations that might happen. So um, you're going to start with a card uh, which gives you secretly a certain number, well, two shares in one of these companies. So I would start, if I had this card, with two shares in the corn company. And I would put this face down on the table and I'm gonna use this card because this is my capital card. It starts Whatever's pointing towards me, that's how much capital I have. So it starts with four pointing towards me. And one of the actions I can take during the game is to pay uh, two coins to, to turn it round and gain more capital as I go through the game. Now, the capital's useful because it's money that you always have. So when you spend it, you still have it. Uh, and you're going to have to spend money to acquire new cards, new stocks. And you can't do anything without, without having that kind of capital. You also have a bit of cash. And you can get more cash as you go through the game. But when you spend that cash, it's gone. So you're going to be able to spend money in combination. So you might have, if you want to spend eight and you're on six capital, you have six already and you need to spend two cash, which you won't get back. But you keep your six. You don't drop down. Uh, on the table, there is a sort of rondelle of cards. So there's a, a circle of cards and each player has a little... Uh, stockbroker token that they're going to move around the rondelle. Now when it's your turn you can choose either at the beginning or at the end of your turn if you want to to change the direction that the players move around that rondelle. The rond rondelle is just a, a, a fancy word for a circle that you move around and take actions on the different places that you land on. Uh, so if the card's up this way, you're going to go clockwise, and when it's up this way, you go anti-clockwise. So you can, that's an additional action you can take to switch the order. Uh, so the kinds of cards that, that are going to be available to you are stock cards. Where are we? That's, oh, these ones. So some of the stock cards, they just show one corn, for example. This one has one cotton. Uh, this one has one steel. Uh, some of them have two. For example, this one has two oil. But you'll notice at the top that it also requires the price of oil to drop when you take that card. So if you take that card, that's going to trigger another action. This is the same. You take two iron but the price or steel, the price of steel will drop. Uh, you can see at the top of these cards there's a cost for taking them. And the way that you calculate the cost is it's this much money, whatever card you take, where you land on. So you're going to go around and these cards are in front of you and you can move as many spaces as you want, but you pay one for each space you move. So if I want to get this card and it's next to me on the space next to me and we're going in the right direction, 
then I'd pay one to move onto the card, one space, and then I'd pay another four, so I'd end up paying five. And remember, you can pay that five from your capital. Uh, and then I'd take the card, I'd complete the, uh, the uh, fluctuation in the market, and I'd have two shares in this company. If I want to move further and take a card that's further away, I have to pay for each step I take around the rondelle. So you're going to acquire these shares. Another type of card that there is available is this sort of market fluctuation card. Card. So this one, you'll, you'll take it, uh, you'll pay the cost, you'll pay to get there and you'll pay the cost of the card. You'll complete the action. In this case, it's two, the corn will raise two points. So the corn will go up on this board two places. So the, the value of corn is increasing. And then you keep this card because it's going to give you victory points at the end of the game. Uh, this one is uh, similar. This is actually you can raise the, the, the price of any of the four commodities by one. That's a bit more expensive. Uh, sometimes they're, they're decreases and you might want to do that if you know that you're, one of your opponents has got a lot of that thing. You want to decrease the price of something someone else has got. Some of them allow you to increase more than once. Some of them have other uh, uh, actions. This one means that you're going to decrease the price of the, the commodity that is currently the most valuable. This one means that everyone has to pay two coins. Now, if at any stage you don't have enough money to pay and you have to pay for something, then you need to take out a loan. You can't pay these loans back. They're there for the end of the, until the end of the game. You'll get five, do, five, five of these coins if you get a loan, but you're going to get minus eight points at the end of the game. So you don't really want to have to take out loans if you can avoid it. If you need a second loan, you flip it over and you're going to get minus 16. That's not great. You want to avoid loans, so you need some cash to pay for things. So one of the things you can do is you can move around the board and take cards. Something else you can do is you can sell your stocks. Uh, when you sell your stocks, you get whatever the price it is in cash uh, for however many you're selling. Uh, I think there might be a limit to what you can sell. Uh, I think there's three. I think you can sell up to three. Um, let's just check that quickly. Uh, da, 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 da. Game set up, move and buy, sell. Sell a stock, must be a different thing. Oh, it's acquired that you can sell up to three. We'll talk about that in a minute. You can sell one stock, you get the price for that stock, uh, you take the cash and you can use that. Uh, then, then instead of discarding that card, you put it on the rondelle with another card. Cards are discarded as you go through the game and they're discarded into three different piles. This is quite a nice mechanism. You choose where you discard them to and then at the end of the game, the game ends when, 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 the pile, when this card is revealed, the bombing card is revealed in the deck, then that triggers the end game. And at that point, you're going to see what the uh, Wall Street crash condition is, okay? And it will be one of these three things. Whichever discard pile has the most cards in will trigger that effect. So there are some golden shares and uh, they, they, they can be used for anything. So if you've got a gold share, it can be used for any of the four commodities. This condition would mean that they don't count for any of the four commodities. They're just worth money. So these three are all different. They're going to trigger different effects. So as you discard cards during the game, you're trying to think about what condition you want, or maybe you're trying to think about keeping them balanced so that nothing happens. So at the, at the end of the game, you count up how much uh, you, what the value of your uh, stocks is, you count up your cash, and that's, that's your points. You discard any, you de deduct any loans, and that's the end of the game. The person with the most money, or points, which is essentially the same thing, they win the game. That is 1920 Wall Street. Right, let's move these cards. Now, another um, lovely stocks game is Acquire. Acquire is quite an old game, and actually, this is a an earlier edition. You can still get the game, but you can, but it, but you get it in a newer edition. Uh, it's it involves creating hotel chains. 
The board doesn't look very exciting. I haven't seen the board of the later edition, so I don't know if it looks more exciting. As you can see, it's just got a lot of, it's got a grid with lots of different codes on it. So this is column one, and all of these are going to be one, and this is row F, and all of these are going to be F. Uh, and but, but this is where you're going to build your hotel chains. So, on your turn, what have we got? Oopsie, we need these cards, and these things here, and this, right. So, uh, you have a certain number of uh, tiles at the beginning of the game. Each tile represents one of the squares on the board. So this is 6A. And I can't remember how many you start with. It's probably six or something, and they're hidden. They're on. They're on your. Uh, I think it is six. That uh, you have them on your little um, tray, so that no one else can see them, but that you can. And on your turn, you do a number of different things. You, the first thing you do is you place a tile from your tray onto the board. Now the way that works is that you just if this is 6A, it's going to go on 6A on the board. So, uh, where is 6A? Let's move all this stuff. Uh, 6A is all the way up here, so this tile will cover 6A. That's the first action. You can choose any of the 6 from your hand, to, from, your, from your tray, to put onto the board. The next thing that will happen is that you can buy up to 3 shares in a hotel chain, any hotel chain that is founded. At the beginning of the game there won't be any to buy because none of the hotel chains are founded. And then you're going to pick up another tile. Now one of the things that happens when you put a tile on the board is it might be on its own like this and nothing will happen to it. But it might join a tile that's already there. Now I probably haven't managed to get a, a, a two that are the same, no, that, that match. So we'll just have to pretend, okay? Let's put these down. Let's pretend that this says 7A instead of 7C. And someone else puts this down, or on my turn, I'm putting this... On my turn, I'm putting this one down on the board next to this one. Now I've got two next to each other. And that's what we want to try and start doing, because when that happens, you've got the start of a hotel chain. In fact, let's do it like this. Then I can use half the board. Okay, so we've got the start of a hotel chain and now you can choose any of the available hotel chains and they'll all be over here. All of these cards, they represent different hotel chains. There are seven. And you're going to take one of these tiles and you're going to put it over the, the tiles on the board so that you've got the beginning of a hotel chain here. And in this case, this would be the festival hotel chain. So that's green. They've all got different names. You've got uh, worldwide, Saxon, imperial, all sorts of names that hotel chains might have. So this is the festival chain of hotels. Uh, now, when you've done that, you can immediately take a stock of that company. So the stock cards are very simple. They just show the colour. So this is fest this is a stock in Festival, one of these. Uh, this is a stock in Imperial. They match the colour of the hotel chain. Um, and, and that's what you'll do. Then you can buy. Now, Festival is now available to buy. And you can buy stocks in that company when the hotel chain is founded. And, you can, and in subsequent turns, as long as this hotel chain is on the board, you can buy more stocks in it. So you can buy up to three stocks on your turn. And then, of course, you'll pick up a tile at the end of your turn. Now, in future turns, this hotel chain might grow. It might grow to, as other tiles are placed, it becomes a bigger hotel chain. So it could sprawl across the board with lots of tiles touching it. If they're touching diagonal, that doesn't count. They're not part of the hotel chain. And, and whenever that you want to buy or sell a stock, you have to check the reference chart and see how much it's worth. So some, so there's the budget hotel chains, there's the mid-range hotel chains, and then uh, Continental and Tower, those are particularly high-end exclusive hotel chains. They're going to cost you more for the stocks, for the shares, and they will give you more when you sell them. So 
the bigger the hotel chain, the higher the value of stock. So you look and see which hotel chain, you look and see how many tiles it sprawls across and that's the price. You can buy and sell as you go through the game. Hotel chains will merge into each other. The greatest shareholder in any one particular chain will get a bonus when their hotel chain is bought or overtaken. At the end of the game, you'll also get a bonus if you have the most shares in a company. One really good strategy is to try and uh, merge your smaller hotel chains with bigger ones and keep getting these big payoffs being the primary shareholder. Uh, it's actually not that complicated uh, for a, an economic game. It's act it, it doesn't play. It doesn't take too long to play. It's a lot of fun. I really recommend it. That's a choir. And finally, Raccoon Tycoon. It's quite a new game. This one. And it's uh, much more beautiful than the other two games we've been talking about. But it's still a very economic game. It's about a sort of beautiful community of animals, raccoons and uh, dogs and cats and uh, bears. And there are some beautiful, there's some beautiful artwork on the cards. This is the, uh, but again, it's, it's an economic game. It's a game about stocks and shares. So. This is the board. In this game, we've got six different commodities. Uh, wheat, wood, iron, coal, goods, and luxuries. So that's represented by a, a wine bottle. These are uh, uh, wheat and wood. They are the sort of the, the cheapest commodity. And then these two in the middle, they're a bit more expensive. And these, the goods and the luxury, they're the most expensive of the, um, of the commodities. So. They're represented by these nice wooden tiles, tiles, components, pieces. Uh, so this is the wheat, although we call it the feet because it looks a bit like a foot. And uh, this is the luxuries to give you an example. Um, and the one of these is one of each of them is placed on the board to show you the price at any one time of that commodity. So for example, this wood might be placed here, it will be placed here at the beginning of the game, but it will increase as you go through the game and it will decrease as well. So uh, it, it, wherever it is, that's the current price. Um, so on your turn, you've got a number of different uh, possible things you can do. You can play one of these production cards and you should have three at any one time, you're gonna have three in your hand. If you play a production card, the price of these things at the top is going to raise. So on this card, it says two coal and one good. So the coal will go up two and the goods will go up one. And then you will receive a certain number of, um, of things. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna get three things. Uh, you might be able to, to, to build buildings which allow you to take more, but most of the time you're gonna get three things each time you play one of these cards. And you're going to produce, you're going to get the things in the bottom half of the card. In this case, uh, wheat and wood and coal, you will get. So you've raised the price of coal twice and goods, and you're going to get the things on the bottom. And you're going to get some of these and you're going to keep them. So that's one thing you can do. So you only do one action on your turn. Uh, so you can play a production card. Or you can sell one type of commodity. So you might build up a collection of coal. Let's say I've got five coal and coal is at a price of um, seven. Let's say, okay, I'm gonna sell my five coal. Five times seven, that's 35. I'm gonna sell my coal, I'm gonna get $35. And I take that as paper money. I take that and then I reduce this one for each thing, everything I've sold. So I've sold five, so it goes down five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So actually that would go right down to the bottom again. But if it was up here, and I sold at $10 each and I had five to sell, I'd get 50 and it would go down five, one, two, three, four, five, and now it's only worth $5 each, okay? So that's the second thing you can do. So you're going to get money. At the end of the game, uh, money doesn't actually count for anything, but money will enable you to do what you need to do to win. So money's a very good thing, though it doesn't give you anything right at the end of the game. 
Okay, so it's very useful that on the back of the rule book, it reminds you of the different actions you can take. So you can produce or you can sell one type of commodity or you can hold an auction. Now I said money doesn't give you anything at the end of the game, but what it does allow you to do is to win, ah, where are we? Here. To win some uh, railroad cards. This is all about cre uh, getting sets of these cards. So there's different kinds of railroads. On the board, at any one time, there'll be two railroads face up. So you might have Sly Fox, look, it's really pretty. You might have a Sly Fox Railroad. Oh, and here's another Sly Fox. There might be two Sly Foxes, or there might be a Fat Cat. Or there might be a Big Bear. And these are the different kinds of railroads. And on your turn, you can choose as one of your possible actions to hold an auction for one of these railroads. And you can say, I'm going to start the bidding at 10. As long as you start the bidding at a price more than it says on the card, then it's fine. Start the bidding at 10, and then uh, other players around the circle can choose to bid if they want to, and it might go very high if lots of people have got money, or you might get it for a song if you're lucky, or if you time your auctions well. Uh, and at the end of the game, these are worth victory points. If you only have one in a set, it, this one, for example, it will only be worth two points. It says at the bottom. But if you have two Sly Foxes in your set, let's say I end the game with both of these, then I'm going to get five points because I've got both of them. If I get manage to get four Sly Foxes, I'm going to get 17 points. So this really, really, you're rewarded for collecting the same kind of railroad, for um, shares in the same kind of railroad. And uh, that's how you get points. There's another way that you get points, and that's probably the fourth action on the, on the list, which I've now can't find. Here we are. You can, oh, that's actually the last one. But the other way you can get points is by purchasing a town card. At the beginning of the game, these are quite cheap. You spend commodities, so instead of selling them, you will exchange them for a, a town card. There'll only be one town card face up on the board at any time. This will give you two victory points at the end of the game. So, for example, you need two steel to get this card. So that's another action you can take. Or you could use four of any commodity if you prefer. At the end of the game, this will give you two victory points. But if you can match it with a railroad card... so. For each town card you have, if you also have a railroad card, any railroad card, then it will give you another two points, your town card will. So at the end of the game, you're going to score your points based on what railroads you have and what town cards you have. The final action you can take on your turn is to buy a building. So at the bottom of the board, there are lots of different buildings. There's a stack of buildings. Uh, there's all sorts of different things, and they all do different things. Um, but, for example, you, this one, you would pay six to take the building and you'd have it in front of you and it gives you a permanent benefit for the rest of the game. This means that whenever you produce, whenever you play one of these production cards, you get three things and you, and you also get a wine bottle, a luxury. This is great, so it, it boosts your production. Uh, this one allows you to produce five things instead of three each turn. Uh, this one means that you can purchase two buildings on a turn instead of one. Some people like purchasing buildings, that might be that might be a good thing. So all the different, it's a big stack of them, all the different buildings do different things which might give you benefits during the game. At the end of the game, you need points, not money. Now this game's great, except if you are playing with people that are likely to get upset, because there is a bit of sniping, there's a bit of I'm going to sell my resources at this moment because I can see that you're about to do that. And I'm, I'm going to choose to sell my three uh, wine bottles, my three luxuries now, and it's going to reduce the price because I, I can see you're going to sell five in a minute. Um, so there's a little bit of take that. Uh, there's also some tension around the railroads. People will start auctions at times when they know other people can't afford them. Quite rightly, that's, that's one way of winning. But it's not, uh, it's, there's potential for arguments with this game. But it's nice that the artwork is great. I like the way the economy works. I think it's quite clever. That's Raccoon Tycoon.